You are now listening to Durian ASEAN, the voice of discovery and sharing. The Durian Heat, bringing big ideas and critical opinions in Southeast Asia. Hey, this is Arlene and you're listening to Durian ASEAN, the voice of discovery and sharing. Today on our very beautiful Tuesday morning, we are going to discuss about economic for creative arts. It's in conjunction with the Mocha Fest, which will be held soon next month. Uh, with us is uh, a bunch of people, including the organizer of Mocha Fest, who will be sharing with us on what is Mocha Fest and some of the um, issues regarding on creative arts industry in Malaysia, especially. So first of all, welcome to the studio. Hi everyone. Hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, hi. My name is Alex Subrin. I'm an expressionist. Uh, my main uh, key is uh, I play guitar and do vocals and produce a bit of music here and there. Yeah. Uh, my name is Razi. I'm an oldies or uh, gambus player. My name is Rahman Roslan. I'm a documentary photographer. My name is Erwan. Uh, I play the guitar uh, with my friend Sherazi and some of beautiful and handsome people from the Caravan of Praise. <laughs> Hi, my name is Mahdar. I'm managing Caravan of Praise and I also do the things that the musicians doesn't want to do. I um, agree with Mahdar. My name is Najmiya Zulkarnain and I'm from the World Islamic Economic Forum Foundation and I'm the project lead for Mocha Fest. Great. Uh, first of all, what is Mocha Fest? So Mocha Fest stands for the Marketplace of the Creative Arts Festival and it's the International Arts Festival under the foundation. And the whole idea was to merge business to arts so it's placed within the form that happens every year. So this year we move around and this year it's its eighth year. Wow, eighth year. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, basically it's to encourage that dialogue between the corporate world and the creative um, industry. Mm. And this this is not the first time it's being held in Kuala Lumpur, right? Yeah, our very first was in Kuala Lumpur in 2010 and we've also been in JB. Oh, wow. Yeah. And why the Mocha Fest is significant to the creative arts industries? I think there's a huge gap, and I think the artists here can agree uh, amongst us and the support uh, with the corporate world. And there's a lot of gaps when we talk about funding and avenues um, and also perceptions. Um, So we we decided that this was a good time to bring a lot of international artists, both established and young emerging talents, to come together and really not beyond exchanging culturally and creatively to talk about... um, the current issues within that they struggle with. And you also bring in a significant number of uh, local creative people here, including the ones that we're yeah, so, today. Yeah, I mean, just to mention a few, here we have Alex Sabrin, Caravan of Praise, Rahman Roslan, who's a photographer. We're also going to be having Sulaiman Issa, a painter, Fairo Sulaiman, a visual artist, um, sorry, visual and multimedia artist, and of course Najwa, she's going to be headlining in the concert. Mm-hmm. So that's just a few, and then we have 40 artists total from 20 different countries. It's a cross-cultural exchange. We've always emphasized that. Um, So therefore, we do have a quota of bringing different nations to represent themselves. And if you notice, most of the artists that we have pre-selected for the content, is they have high influence of um, taking their heritage and tradition into their artwork, and you see this fusion because they're raised and they come from a Western background, so from the US, UK, but they are, say, Pakistani or from Azerbaijan. So you see this fusion, and then you get this fusion and you mix them up with artists from Malaysia and all over. So it's it's very experimental, and that's very interesting because it fosters um, relationship building, and they actually do exchange uh, contacts and end up working together Mm -hmm. post the festival. How many artists from uh, how many countries that will be part of this Mocha Fest? 20 countries. Wow. Yeah. And if you can name some of it? Mauritania, France, Azerbaijan, the US, the UK, um, Russia, I- Italy, many more. I, I can't <laughs> remember. <laughs> and talking about the theme of the Mocha Fest, perhaps you can share more about it? Uh, so the theme this year is preservation of identity. And mm. I think that's something that in Malaysia, it's some. Uh, it's a subject that's interesting to focus on, because a lot of people forget their very own identity and heritage. And mm-hmm. it's it's we've got amazing things uh, that's rooted in our history to bring up um, a fusion of things, melting point of cultures here in Southeast Asia. 
I think most of the music, uh, I mean, not trying to criticize or say anything bad about the music industry. I mean, like, uh, I agree, uh, Najmia, that uh, we've got to produce uh, all these sort of sounds that are very um, bounded and we've got, we're restricted to do like pop rock and stuff like that. Whereas a lot of other people um, uh, and artists, uh, they, they've got other ways of expressing their music and they're very deep about it, you know. So, mm -hmm. and um, this is a great uh, chance for them to express themselves, you know, but we don't see much of it coming out because uh, it doesn't really come out much on the TV and stuff like that, you know. So, I mean, like, collaborating and uh, creating uh, this um, scene makes it even more exciting and brings up more possibilities for all of us. I mean, there's so many great artists in Malaysia and undiscovered people, and unfortunately, they're introverts and not extroverts. And <laughs> it, it is true because mm. in, uh, in this business, uh, you have to be, you have to be uh, out there speaking to people, but there are a lot of people who just... They, they they just don't want to talk about it but they're amazing musicians mm. so you know I'm, I'm happy to be a part of this in the sense and like all these people get to be discovered and their voices get to get heard um, so uh, I find the forum's topics quite interesting and intriguing perhaps you can share more about it Like yeah so we have panel discussions workshops masterclass and a sharing circle <laughs> um, so uh, this sharing circle is actually something new that we introduced this year and it's kind of like an informal Artist roundtable. Oh, really? <laughs> and then the two topics is um, social entrepreneurship. How do we sustain our local artisans and artists? And on the next day, we have one um, which is on the creative workforce, improving perceptions, impro improving cult standards, therefore improving culture. So the creative workforce were really underpaid. Would you agree <laughs> with me, guys? <laughs> We will that's, actually, that's another session. Yeah, we will actually discuss about uh, the creative uh, industries here, the plights that uh, a lot of the creative people here face later on in the discussion. Right now, we will put on the music and we'll take a short break. The Durian Heat, bringing big ideas and critical opinions in Southeast Asia. Hey, this is Arlene. You're back with me again on our Durian ASEAN, where we discuss issues on Southeast Asia. And of course, uh, we early on, we discuss on the Mocha Fest. Let's move on to the artists and also creative people that will be uh, presenting or will be part of the Mocha Fest. Yes. Uh, first of all, I want to touch on the artist Alex Subrin. Perhaps you can share more about what you do. Okay, uh, I'm actually a computer software programmer by profession, mm -hmm. and I, I was in Australia, but uh, while doing that, I discovered that I do not like working in an office. And it's, like most uh, of us, yeah? Sorry? Like most of us. Uh, like most of us, <laughs> and I was contributing to the Illuminati and the Masonic people, so <laughs> I started busking on the streets of Perth. And then I moved on to Melbourne, and then I came back to Malaysia, got involved with the music industry, met a few people, uh, got a few awards from Vima AIM, and um, now I play in clubs and I do shows uh, for weddings here and there. And apart from that, I discovered that I have the uh, uh, passion to deal with art. So I also do murals and also sell artwork like um, with raw iron. So that actually helps me uh, funnel cash through to produce music that I like to produce. Mm -hmm. The songs that I used to do uh, that I do is like sort of like pop rock. Mm -hmm. I started off with that. Uh, but now I'm against it, so now, <laughs> <coughs> not against oh. it. Um, how, how would I say? So evolve, it's been controlled evolve. By it. <laughs> evolve. <laughs> evolve. You always evolve from your first album to your second album. Um, so now I'm going a bit more into uh, RPG-ated stuff and uh, just putting what's current. Uh, uh, my idols are like uh, Jeff Buckley, uh, Cedric Zavala from the Mars Volta, and um, what Robert Plant. And my biggest, my biggest idol of all time that reminds me how to sing is uh, my god, Freddie Mercury. I see. That's a long history of your music career. <laughs> it can go longer. It's just that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, when, when you discover Mocha Fest, what, uh, what are the things that you felt like uh, Mocha Fest uh, can be the platform that you wanted to address, uh, at least your music or part of some of your creative work that you have done? Well, at that point in time, I was just thinking, okay, so it's a cool platform to, to work with and, and start off with. Uh, but honestly, uh, thinking about it right now in the studio, um, uh, when you hear a song on the radio, I mean, that's all you hear. You just hear something there, right? But if, you, if you're on stage, there's so many other things that's there. So now, we were talking about working with visual artists mm -hmm. as well, right? Mm -hmm. So when, as an artist, and you ask people to come, come for your shows and pay, right, you've got to give them a show, 
smokes, lighting, mm. visual, performance. There's a whole experience Exactly. That's mm. what you want to sell. And that's what mm. people used to do. And that's what we're missing out. It's just not like a few chords and I can sing well or um, the best thing on the voice or whatsoever. Mm. It's an experience that you put out there. So that's... And I, I'm just... I'm, I'm really excited to meet people and just see uh, the possibilities uh, that can that can uh, evolve from there and also I think music is an ongoing process because mm-hmm. the more input I guess with every musician and every ex- uh, expression is the more that you see and the more that you receive that's where you get a better output yeah mm. you know so yeah that's, that's so, for me Caravan you're also musician I mean a group of uh, musician right uh, share with us what it what, what do you do exactly well do Caravan there's to be Is exact, it a tree 12, 12, oh, uh, 12, 12 of, of us. And uh, we got together about one, one half years ago. And uh, we actually do our individual stuff, like me. Uh, I'm in a duo with Adib. And then there's Andy, Flop Poppy. Oh, and wow. then uh, Shehradi. And then we have a percussionist. And we, ha- we also have another vocalist, Azhar Hilmi. And violinist, Mustana from Syria. We got a keyboardist from Palestine. So that uh, means Samir. you are actually quite global in that sense. Well, or at least you are formed by a group a of few countries. people who are. Yeah. And Singapore, Adib is also from Singapore. Mm. So what uh, attracted us together probably is just something we experience. Um, how do you say it? Love of the profit? Love. <laughs> ah, basically love. So what we does that mean, the caravan of... Praise. Caravan is us, a group of people, moving from one place to another, and uh, hopefully praising. Mm-hmm. They were praiseworthy. So how do you fi- do you define your music then? We don't try to define it. We just uh, because just if you want to define it, it's uh, me and Adib. We do like the music is pop, R and B. Sheikh does Arabic. Uh, Baba is rock. Aza is pop. So. We just come together. The music to us is only a tool. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, I need to share you with you this. I always ask uh, influential. I mean, who I think are thinkers in the music industry. I'll ask them this question: What makes a good song? Is it the music or is it the melody? Some will say the music. Some will say the melody. Some will say it's a combination. But I ask this one particular individual. And you know what he said? Mm-hmm. Erwan, what do you want to say? What is your message? That will drive your... Uh, that, would, that would drive you. When, the, when people don't want to listen to your music, when the money is not there, when the people don't like your melody, what do you want to say? So to us, it's the message. The music is only a tool. So when it comes to religious inspired uh, music, hmm. is Shit. it w- is it well received by the larger community? Maybe either by Muslim, non-Muslim, or religious or See, non-religious I, people. I, I don't really like it. for us. I think I don't really know what is religious inspired music because you know I think music is cultural. It's not religion. Mm. You know because uh, you you if you see if you see. Uh, Arabic music, like what's uh, what's what's playing now, what Shea is playing. You know, you see Arabic music and Greek music and Turkish music is all about similar. Mm. But it's all about you praising yeah. the Lord. No, 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 the the music the style, music. you know, the melody, the, melody. the way it's played. You know, it's it's very similar. So it, it is a cultural like like what Mocha Fes is try, uh, trying to do is that cultural exchange and influences that happens at different regions. Mm. So I don't think. Me personally, that there's no such thing as religious music. Mm. Some people would like to sell that because it's 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 a hot sell. You know, it's sellable. Mm. It's you know what the, if, you know if that's what the market want. Mm. But I don't think there's no such thing for me for us. There's no such thing as religious music. Yeah. You, you know, like because you break it down. Mm. Music not supposed to do that. Mm. Music supposed to bring people together. Yeah. But when you say, oh, this religious music, some say, oh, that's your religion. Yeah, <laughs> that's your religious music. You know what I mean? So we listen to Kawali, we listen to Sitar and all that. Yeah. You know, we don't think that's Hindu music or, you know, Arabic music. We just say it's just music. It's just some some musician putting all the right sounds together. Come together. So talking about creative arts, one of the uh, areas that people seldom talk about is photography. 
Uh, I mean, especially with the influx of Instagram and social media, mm. uh, the value of photography has somehow diminished. But we have our photography here. He's a photojournalist and documentary photographer, Rahman Roslan. Maybe you want to share more about about it. About photography yeah. state in Malaysia, and or also your work as a photographer. No, well, about shit, Rahman. You about talk about shit. <laughs> <laughs> So okay, let's start with um, what I do. Um, I've spent seven to eight years doing news photography for international publications. Until uh, last March, I stopped doing news uh, just because I, I'm tired of news. Because news has a very short lifespan, which is a day. After a day, it's no more news. And and imagine doing that every day for eight years. It's very tiring. So I, I have huge respect to news photographers out there. But so normally every day you capture Najib's photo, is it? Uh, depends <laughs> because I work with uh, the likes of, like for example, I work with the New York Times. So mm-hmm. if if the news is worthy of American tra- uh, interest, then we'll cover it. So it depends on. I mean, everybody has their own agenda and their own mission. If you work with an Australian newspaper, anything Australia would be interesting for them. Mm-hmm. So you always have to have this mindset of what would be interesting for the crowd to, to see and also you work with uh, international time so you have three working hours so if you file the pictures to Germany it means you have a little bit of time to play around six hours behind but if you file the pictures to Japan you have to catch up so they have a printing deadline so it's very tiring uh, and it can be taxing I don't know how people do it 20-30 years uh, so what happened was you know throughout your journey throughout my journey of photography news I found that there's another outlet called Documentary which gives you what news doesn't give to photographers which is your own voice mm. so you are able to actually have an opinion because news is all about reporting mm. but documentary you can have your own voice so I choose that now um, I focus more on documentary and I try to um, report on things close to my heart which is you know now I'm focusing more on uh, Islam because I think I mean, I started with uh, the title halal because everybody, when I go, you know, out station, they say, oh, "Do you eat halal food?" <laughs> so they thought halal is all about food, you know, <laughs> pork and chicken and blah blah. That's the general assumption. Yeah, and yeah. it's very. I mean, you'd be surprised how shallow people are, and uh, including me. So you know, for me, if you have an if you have a question, you have to find the answer yourself. So it's like a journey for me to find the answer to my questions. Yes. So you are using yeah. photo to actually tell a story and not just any story but so you are trying to impart knowledge to uh, the In a way sharing Not, mm-hmm. I mean there's two ways of, of photography One is the photographer's experience with the subject That one is for me it's a gift mm-hmm. I cannot tell whether the sun is going to be great or bad tomorrow mm-hmm. So whenever I step out of my house is a gift. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no. I mean, a lot of people will say, "Oh, you have to plan this and that." But tell me, eight years, nine years in photography, you can plan all you want. But if it's gonna rain, it's gonna rain. <laughs> 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 so um, another part is when you finish the, the the work, the subject, and you try to show it somewhere. It's amazing to see how people react to the work. For example, some of the work can be controversial, you know, and some of the work can be really boring, like. I went to France uh, last month to show to show uh, in in a, in a they have a photojournalism conference in Papignon, south of France. I mean, for me, when I show a picture of a lady with a tudong clad lady uh, with a smartphone, it's totally normal for us. Like we see that every day. But when I show it to an old editor, I mean, quite uh, old it woman, a she's subject, like, "Oh, this is interesting." I said, oh. "Why?" Because uh, she's a Muslim and with a smartphone. I'm like, <laughs> well, that's like pretty normal. You know, it's like you eating and drinking here. Like, but for them, they never seen such images. Where you know, we call this girl's hijab, hijabista, like this, like you know what Yuna is wearing. Like it's very trendy. But for them, they don't really see that part of uh, Muslim lifestyle in south of France. And they're quite surprised for, to see me sitting with them in a bar. It's like, oh, I thought you don't drink, but yeah, I don't drink, but I can sit here, right? <laughs> like, you know, those kind of things. So for me, it's very interesting. And when you show this to Kuala Lumpur crowd, their reaction is absolutely different. They might not even uh, glance at it. So yeah, that's the beauty of photography. You know, you have, uh, you cannot control it. You can only push it out there and let people 
react to it. Interesting. And you as a photographer, uh, is it hard for you to somehow, uh, uh, somehow I guess not the word market, but actually uh, share your photo, your your work to ad- to the rest of uh, the people out there? Um. Yes and no. Nowadays it's easier because you have social media. It's the fastest. I mean, within one but second. Can you make a living? Okay, to make a living, you have to be creative a bit. You have to, you know, it's like uh, you have to be open enough for you to be able to make a living. For example, if you think of photography as a commercial outlet, I don't think it will be easy. But if you think it as an expression, it's like music. If you if you write songs like uh, Freddie Mercury, people will say, oh, he's like Freddie Mercury. <laughs> he's not f- the Freddie Mercury. It's the same with photography. So I have to make it mine. So people will... I mean, magazines will find me because of my style. So you have to have a trademark in that sense. Exactly, absolutely, hundred percent. That's the thing that is very difficult because we are bombarded with visual uh, cultures every single day. So, like, if you Google how Japanese photographers see the world, it's different. It's like stark black and white, very very strong contrast. And if you Google European style of photography. The boss uh, language, you know, the bar house, the line, and everything is different. So we don't have Malaysian photography. Maybe you can w- set the bar. <laughs> we, we, I, I, me and my friends are trying because if you if you find a history of Malaysian photography, I don't think we have a lot of people to look at. We have uh, the late Ismail Hashim, but that's very new. It's like less than thirty years old. We're talking about camera was uh, created long time ago, mm. and to reach this shore. Of this part of the world, <laughs> it took a long time, and now that we have internet, it helps us to you know reach the information faster. Mm. Therefore, you know we have to be a bit more uh, independent. That's true. As a as a musician as well, may, may I add, I'm very grateful to photographers out there because they actually capture these moments of us right. uh, being on stage. That's you know, right. and uh, I like to make a note out there to all musicians as well. You know, to be grateful and give credit to photographers because they do a lot of hard work. You know, and some people just say, "Oh, it's just a picture." No, there's there's so much more to learning the art of it and getting okay. the angle, squatting down. You know, finding the right lens. You know. And thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. you I mean, thanks to the musician to be a subject. No? <laughs> 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 but I can share with you a very, very common uh, perception about photographers. Not only in Malaysia, everywhere. You go to Brazil, it's the same. So, for example, if you go to a uh, uh, eating, I mean, eating uh, a dinner, right, with your friends, people will ask like, "Where's your camera? Why don't you bring a camera?" I mean, I always tell them. I mean, I used to be. Piss off! But now I learn how to answer uh, in a in a very <laughs> diplomatic uh, way. Diplomatic way, <laughs> which is I will say, okay, you know, a dentist will not carry the whole freaking equipment to dinner, no? <laughs> like uh, I will, yeah. yeah. I that's mean, it's true. yeah, it's like uh, it's really what we do for a living, number one, and then we, uh, sometimes we express ourselves, which is we have personal project, but we don't carry cameras around our neck uh. all the time. <laughs> and we will take a short break when we return. We'll discuss further on the creative arts industry in Malaysia. The Durian Heat, bringing big ideas and critical opinions in Southeast Asia. Hey, this is Arlene. We are back again at Durian ASEAN to discuss on the economy for creative arts. Uh, this is in conjunction with the Mocha Fest. So, uh, t- continue our discussion on Mocha Fest. Uh, I think Mocha Fest provide uh, one of the essential uh, key in uh, creative arts that is in dire need right now, which is platforms and access for musicians, for creative people. And uh, talking about creative arts, do you think uh, in Malaysia, in the Malaysian context, uh, do you think there's enough platforms and access for musicians to somehow promote their music or to sell their music? Or not just music, but arts in general? Perhaps we can have... Me or a musician? We can have our organizer here oh, too. Oh, okay. Um, in Malaysia, I think it's still quite new. and But then you see this wave of a lot of entrepreneurs. Because, you know, you've got social media, so people can sort of brand and manage themselves. But overall, through our experience with Mocha Fest and the numerous discussions we've had, we've always agreed that there is this barrier between 
artists and their communication and relationship building with sponsors or funders or investors. It's, it's also the way you present yourself. And there's this, always this thing of understanding different expectations. And artists' expectation of maintaining their works, expression, and integrities it's it's not so easy to sell in terms of okay what it's what what is its value and what can it bring an investor mm-hmm. so um there's this gap and um recently we've come to the conclusion that a role of an artist manager is quite essential mm-hmm. to sort of merge the two but but you know when you want to talk about economy and trying to you know fill in the gap between uh creative arts and also uh, how it can benefit the economy or even the artists themselves. It's not an easy topic to talk about, you know, when especially when artists uh, have very strong feeling of strong uh, sentiment towards their art. It's hard for them to actually say, hey, this is the value of my art. This is how I'm going to sell it in economic terms. Perhaps we can have... Yeah, so one of our panel discussion, uh-huh. uh, which is uh, a main focal point, mm-hmm. is actually how do we evaluate and value the arts, the creative economy, and the cultural economy, because it's both tangible and intangible. Um, It's not purely profit-driven, so I don't think it's fair to say, and it depends on the genre as well, it's not fair to say that the value of that artwork or that song is how much people are willing to pay for it. But let's look at the social impacts and uh, the other impacts of, of the work itself and where it plays a role in society at large. So this conversation of how do you define it, it's going to be discussed at the festival so I don't have an answer for you and I think that's to be discussed here in Malaysia because you can have um, yeah, yeah some well, uh, coming things. from a, a musician musician's point of view let's be uh, uh, like uh, transparent about it right now um, it's not uh, no we first and foremost we do not have a platform because I've been arguing for this for a long time because there are a lot of musicians out there who have their day jobs right now we should have a circuit around Malaysia that means having a, a certain pub uh, a certain scene in every state where someone can actually do a tour from one state to another and just take off three months of their work and showcase their music and then maybe be discovered. But unfortunately right now with events and uh, um, I'm not talking about Mocha Fest, I'm just talking <laughs> about other events and let's not name them. Um, they are actually looking at how much of pull that you can bring in, how much people you can bring in. Mm. So yeah. basically what p- musicians, are, the f- this is for the newbies that they don't understand, 80% of the music industry is a business. So it's not that I have these three chords, this amazing song, boom, 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 I'm going to make it. No, it's not like someone's going to come up and believe in you. Mm. It's basically how many likes and how many followings you have on your Facebook. So that's where it works. Even though how talented you are, and these, these agents, they only come along when you have been discovered on YouTube. If you're famous there, then they come to you, then they come knocking on your door. So really, I don't really see a platform here. And I think it's a lot about connections. In some certain cases, I think events are a bit biased to certain artists because mm-hmm. they're not like, I believe in your music or whatsoever. Uh, I'm a bit lucky, but um, I do feel there are a lot of other music- musicians out there who are amazingly talented but do not have the opportunity. And... Um, they can't afford an agent. And, and do you guys think that the Malaysian market is too, I guess, polarized in that sense and, and doesn't really hit the spot? I mean, I give example of one Malaysian singer that actually went to China to pursue her music uh, because uh, apparently there's a larger market that consume her music. I mean, do you think that the platform in, in Malaysia is too small? Yeah, I do. I would have to agree because it's also the market and I think Mahathir has experience with this. Even as event organizers, um, there's a lot of promotion to be done on our end to educate the crowd because you can put on an amazing event with content there with artists um, who have something to, significant to share, but will people come through even if it's just 30 ringgit entrance? You know, so I'm not sure whether audience we're there yet culturally to respond to the arts. Mm-hmm. Perhaps we can have. Yeah, uh, I would agree with Najmia because in in my line, it's the same people every single exhibition. It's the same people every every single opening. And then they say it's short sendiri event. Right? <laughs> short sendiri, <laughs> and um, you know, people bring their wives, their girlfriends, and that's it. Mm-hmm. So, there, I mean, I think Malaysian also struggles with uh, commercialism of artwork. And everybody, I mean, at the end of the day, it's quite sad for me when I, you know, I'm still young in this industry. 
for me to see people who are experienced uh, <coughs> succumb to commercialism because the work that they produce basically is because of the demand. Mm-hmm. So let's say some guy uh, drawing durian for 10 exhibitions in a row. I said, why do you keep on drawing this durian? You have nothing new to do. Uh, and then he said, like, oh, because it's still in demand and why not? So, you know, it, it's a it's a struggle for us, uh, even as photographer or musician, whether to do a song commercially, to take commercial photography, or to express ourselves and wait for the stars to fall on the line. Lap. Exactly right. <laughs> line of right. stars. Right. <laughs> So what we need actually is a uh, is a uh, someone to help us to do the marketing, mm-hmm. but not to market our artwork or our 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 art to a commercial market, uh, which fits certain shape, mm-hmm. but to actually create if they don't have one, create one for us. You know? That's right. Mm-hmm. Uh, for example, how we can uh, appreciate the music of the Indonesians. We go to Bali, we listen to them, and we know it comes from Bali, like gamelan, right? We know uh, it's Bali is gamelan because it was marketed with the originality and blah, blah, blah. And we know in photography, we know it comes from Japan because that's how Japanese photography is associated with. So we don't have that. I mean, I hope someone that has the right power or the right financial capabilities can come up with something mm-hmm. uh, to help us find that uh, common ground or in a balance. Cause I- if you have this platform right now, you start it right now. In a few years' time, we're going to get somewhere. Everyone's going to get somewhere, and we're going to be known on the map mm-hmm. because people are willing to pay for international artists and put down the red carpet for international artists. But uh, if we go overseas to their countries, we, do we get the red carpet? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do, do, do you understand what I'm saying? Not so. That's that's that mental block that we have there actually. So it it should start now. Someone should mm-hmm. start doing it actually. And for the Malaysian consumers, uh, our creative consumers, do you think? We are too either Eurocentric or Western centric when it comes to uh, the stuff that we consume. Like we would pay hundreds or even thousands of ringgit just to get a seat on the front row uh, to watch Maria Carey or some international artists or international, uh, even creative people, not necessarily musician. But we won't even pay thirty ringgit for a cover charge for music uh, performance. I can't really judge, but um, I would say it's got a lot to do with exposure because obviously mainstream sells, and I think it's another level here in Malaysia because there's not enough exposure amongst the mass. You know, that's my personal opinion. But preserving what was the the theme for? Our so preserving yeah, preserving. So the theme for Mokafest is preservation of identity. This is what we want to highlight. This is what we mm. want to market. Beautiful. And 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 show that you know there's there's a lot more. To to uh, to share within ourselves, we don't need to look out to the west. Mm. Nice, nice. Mm-hmm. That's Shams Yusuf, I think we had him here uh, w- a while back. He's a how do you say it? He's an American scholar, Shams Yusuf. So somebody asked him how does he deal with uh, the problems in America, and he said, "You'll know soon enough because you." Your culture is heavily influenced by American culture, but then again, he said you still have the orangutan, <laughs> meaning don't lose it, okay. don't lose your identity, don't lose. It. If, even if you, ha- yes, we are heavily influenced. We listen, we we idolize, we listen, we Im- we uh, inspired by those uh, the artists in the West, um, but we also have our own identity. Mm-hmm. So, and it's funny because. People from outside of Malaysia are willing to pay thousands for some of the original works, old original works. They mm. fund for the research research of Jawi script, for example. But Malaysians, you know, they're not that interested. Mm. Mm-hmm. So a lot of it uh, goes along on the I- on the line of awareness and e- educating oneself about yeah. our that local nev- culture yeah. and, and how it's marketed. Yeah, exactly. yeah, you know, like how people how we market and promote it. It's quite sad because, for example, it's very easy for me to get a residentship in London compared to in somewhere in Malaysia. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? You know, like in London, which I don't know maybe 10 people, but it's very easy. You Google, there's thousands of resi- residency there. You can apply and they actually reply to you. Mm-hmm. They give you a call and have a discussion. Okay, let's go. Mm-hmm. In Malaysia, you Google maybe very few. I mean, photography, you're talking about photography, there's no even budget for it. Mm. I think the budget has a lot to do with the 
the raise of the toll prices lately, no? Yeah. <laughs> we will leave our um, budget <laughs> discussion later on. So for example, right? Uh, it's just an idea. I don't know. Yeah, for example, um, Sheikh Maktoum, the Dubai. yeah from Dubai, right? Has this competition called HIPA. Uh, it's the largest competition in the world in terms of price. It's one hundred thousand euro, if I'm not mistaken, mm. and. What did I mean? I mean, can you imagine why do they choose photography to ca- you know to come up with such a big price? There must be something, right? And you know, it's interesting to see uh, uh, that he founded this foundation to support photography around the world. Mm. Where else? Dubai is not known for photography, and it's pretty boring there. You know, it's like there's not much compared to Malaysia. I'm telling you. For example, National Geographic. If you Google pictures of Malaysia, the last one you will see is about a uh, illegal. Logging back in the 1994. Uh, we knew that some of what's called uh, international musician, even like Sting, uh, and then what's called Audio Slave and others, they try to get uh, original sound from South, Southeast Asia, from Middle East. They try to uh, explore about the ethnic music, and then they they produce a new type of music. In uh, in Europe or where, but us here we have the originality, but we still looking to the second party. Mm. They are not the mm. first party. We are the first party, but why we have to learn from them? Mm. They, they should learn from us here. Interesting we, point. We we yeah. neglecting our orangutan. They are <laughs> looking at our orangutan. We not. I see. When in fact the orangutan is just behind our. It's just in our backyard. Mm. But you know, I don't want to talk. Negative about the local uh, creative industries. I think there are new emerging trends and oh, for sure, yeah, and uh, economy that I mean, I mean, f- you guys are here because you guys believe in the local economy. Yeah, yeah. in a yeah. way, perhaps you can share more. What are the things that maybe we are not aware, of, but is 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 actually you know becoming more and more, um, I guess, significant in our current context. Like. Uh, I would like to answer this one. My friend from, from Middle East, yeah, from Dubai, they contact me due to what's called Dubai Shopping Festival and then Arabian Travel Market. They told us, Razi, uh, do you have any contact here in Malaysia who's doing the, what's called, the uh, sending the musician or the artist from Malaysia to uh, to attend the Arabian Travel Market or Dubai Shopping Festival? Uh, I said, I have some contacts, so I'll, uh, I will introduce them to you. But the content is, why when from here they bring some musician or artist to Middle East, it's not the one who's, who's related with Middle East culture. So they, uh, from here they, they brought something like uh, Tarian from uh, Sa- Sabah or Sarawak, which are not related to uh, Middle East. But if you bring, bring a gazelle group or a uh, Samra group, group from, from Johor, Gambus group it will be a lot easier and more related to the market mm. uh, that we're going to send over there. Mm. Anyone want to respond? Can I? Okay. I think uh, this is a bit damning. Eh? If you look like uh, from my observation it's what has happened, it's, it's, it's a vicious cycle. You know, because uh, the country, our country, the last years, you know, since the 70s, I would say, have been focusing more on technical development. So we are, we are, we plan to uh, you know, race engineers and doctors and all these professionals, doctors. and unfortunately, arts has been put to the side. I mean, if you go to school, you know how many hours you get a week doing art classes, as compared to math, science, and all the rest. So, you have a generation now, not just one, probably two, three, four generations who's totally artless. Mm. The appreciation of art is not there. Mm. So, th- and you know, with with a, a generations like that. You can only sell popular art. This is what you're talking about, Maria Carey. Those are popular names. They're not art per se, but because their name is popular. Like I have, I work with like full on concert promoter who brings like Bon Jovi, Pet Shop Boys, Every Levine. You know, I would suggest some artists to him that I know are great from Europe, you know, more alternative. He says, like, you know what? I'm not here to promote this artist. I want to promote concert. I want somebody that I put the name in the newspaper and they sell. So that's why. And because they, we have generations that have not been given real art education, so the appreciation for yeah. art is not there. You can't blame them. 
totally because they just have no fine art appreciation. So whatever comes out, and I'm sorry, I mean the movie industry is going to hate me for this, but look at the Chereka Rama and all that. That's coming all our tele movies. It's moronic. Seriously, it's pathetic to me. I can't even watch them. And I've met producers who has to balance this. He has to do all the moronic things for money because that's what the people want. But he has his own project, which is totally like I say, like I've never seen a Malay movie this good since the movie Abang, <laughs> Rahim Razali. You know, like. Mm. You know, I, I've never seen one this good. Oh, it's some watchable. I say watchable, and he says because yeah, this is this is my private, but I have to do all those commercial stuff because this is where the money comes. I'd argue that it's not what they want. They don't know what they want. Huh? I'd argue that you said that they have to produce it because it's what the people want. I'd argue mm-hmm. that they don't know what they want because they've been <laughs> somehow told that this is. You mean the viewer, right? Yeah, ah, that's viewer. what I mean. That's the lack of art education. So how do you yeah. pre- appreciate fine art yeah. when you don't? We're not taught about art at the first place. Mm. I mean, just an example in university. I I was from the arts department. I would say eighty percent or ninety percent of those students that were in the art department was not by choice, but because they did not get into let's say science or math. Mm. So it's kind of like okay, the dropouts. Let's just do the arts. So they didn't really care. I see. So But things are changing though. Things yeah. are changing. Things would are changing. You, would you use uh, the late Yasmin Ahmad as a great example mm-hmm. where all where, where she was uh, really recognized overseas instead of Malaysia and got much more recogni- exactly. recognition? Exactly. Mm-hmm. I there. mean, this has happened. Dato Sheikh, for instance. Dato Sheikh is a big hit in France. Like he's a superstar in France. I mean, he did a concert. It looks like Pink Floyd concert in France. But here, Umi. That's it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we all know him for the song Umi, he d- and he he realized, and exactly. he didn't come here to 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 make it big. He went back. Yeah, you so know. You guys are part of the Mocha Fest. <laughs> Actually, exactly. we I hope that we have a longer session on this. Unfortunately, we only have an hour. Uh, before we end the show, uh, let's uh, talk about the Mocha Fest. When is it? Okay, and so how can people participate in it. Yeah, it's one week away. Uh, Mocha Fest starts on the first. First, no, sorry, third of November, Tuesday, fourth uh, and fifth, uh, and just to you can find our schedule at www.wief.org. Um, you can register for free at mochafest2015.eventbrite.com, and also a reminder: don't miss out on the concert, which is on the fourth at KLCC, 8 p.m. to 10:30 p.m. Thank oh, you. Oh, you can everyone. register walk in, isn't it? You, you can, can walk in. You can walk in as well. Yeah. Or or you can call Ida. <laughs> oh, and um, we're working with our partners Grab Car. So for those who aren't taking the LRT, you get um, five ringgit off to and fro. With and that, it's free. Oh. And there's nothing commercial about it. It's free. <laughs> yes. <laughs> with that, thank you, everyone. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you, Ali. Thank you so thank much. You,